Hi, this is Tim. I want to take a couple minutes to go over this rotary phase converter. I posted this on LinkedIn and Instagram and several people asked if I would make a video on it. Now, I don't have time to go really in depth on this, but I did want to just do a quick overview. That way you can see how it works. So long story short, this takes 120 volt wall power and creates 230 volt three phase power. Now this is mostly for testing because you can only get so much power out of a wall outlet. I mean, your typical outlet's gonna be 15 amps. You can have it 80% loaded and that would be 12 amps. And then we're gonna take it from 120 to 220 with the single phase transformer. So that's gonna take you down to six amps. And then by the time you actually make three phase power out of it, you have about four amps available. Now I didn't do any math on that. I just threw those numbers out of my head, but they sound roughly right. A few questions people had was one, well, one, how does it operate? And I'll go through that really quickly. And also, could you do the same thing for 480? Well, yes, and we'll talk a little bit about that. But yeah, if you can, if you have a transformer that goes from 480 to 120, you can backfeed it typically and get 480 out of it. Now, you would need a 480 volt phase converter then, and you'd have about two amps available. So again, nothing to really run a machine. But for testing purposes, it would be worthwhile. In fact, we have a rotary phase converter, a fairly large one. And I think I may duplicate this because sometimes I need three phase power for testing and my fixed rotary phase converter isn't really accessible. So this would be kind of nice to have a portable rotary phase converter that could plug into 110 volt. First, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what type of voltage it does put out and explain how. And it's fairly quiet even. So we have 120 volt coming from our wall outlet and then it's going to take that and boost it to 240 with this transformer. And I'll pop this open and show you what's inside in a second. And then the rotary phase converter is going to make that artificial third leg. If I can get this where you can see it, put this on voltage, AC, then between L1 and L2, we've got 236 volt. I'm reading that backwards uh, maybe that may have been 238 not sure and yeah we got about 240 there and then finally we have 240 there so it's really well balanced even but so this is creating 233 phase that we can use for testing so let's talk a little bit about how it works so this transformer here can take 240 or 480 and create 120 or 240. And this is your typical single phase transformer. And almost all transformers can be backfed. So you can take and plug 120 in and we could create 240 or 480. Then we're gonna feed that to the rotary phase converter. And I've got a video and I'll put it down in the description. It goes a little further into this, but you can take any three phase motor and connect single phase to it. And once you get it turning, it'll generate that third leg. And so this in this part has a starting capacitor and that starting capacitor gives it that boost to get that motor rotating. Because if you try to power a three phase motor off a single phase, the one thing they won't do is start. So that's what's up in here. And that's gonna give you 230 unbalanced three phase, we'll say. So you'll have, if we go leg to ground, you'll have one that's at 120 because that's what we're powering it with. You'll have another at 120 because that's the other true leg. And then your other leg will be somewhere around 90 to 100 volts. Now what I was usually see done after that, in fact, on everyone until this, is that you use balancing capacitors to kind of balance out your power. And this one doesn't do it that way. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is this is a phase matic rotary phase converter. Uh, they aren't sponsoring this in any way. And I've never used one of these. I've always used, if somebody wants to buy one off the shelf, I've always used an American rotary. Just I've had good luck out of them or I've built my own. But this is my first time using this phase matic and it seems great. The biggest reason I didn't use American Rotary on this one is they didn't have one that would scale down as small as I need it because this is supposed to be as portable as possible. But if we pop this open right here, then inside this one actually enclosed, there is a balancing transformer on this one. So what it does is it takes T2 and T3 in. So this is a true 120 volt leg and this is our artificial leg. 
and then it's boosting it through this transformer. And I wish I had time to figure out the turns ratio on this transformer. I think that would be a really neat exercise. And while we're in here, while this is very tight, let's just talk about it real quick. Is for 120, we needed to have X2 to X4 and X1 to X3. And that was gonna be feeding our 120. Here is the neutral coming in and it's connected to X1 and X3. And then if in here I can find, yep, here is our black wire of our 120 and it's connected to X2 and X4. And then we have everything grounded. And then coming out of this, we're gonna make 240. And that's gonna be this diagram right here. So H1 and H3 is gonna go to one leg of our phase converter and H2 and H4 is gonna go to the other leg of our phase converter. And then here's a diagram of how we're actually wiring the phase converter. So we have L1 and L2, which is our 240 that we made out of our transformer. And then L1 is going to T1 of our motor. L2 is going to T2 of our motor. And then notice that it also goes to that voltage stabilizer. So then we generate T3, which goes to the end of that voltage stabilizer and then we get an output of our third leg and from that we've got three phase output now one final thing is a lot of times you need 208 and this is a 240 volt phase converter and i was in a pretty big hurry to build this so i didn't want to deviate a lot from the specification so 120 in 240 volt out that's exactly what i'm feeding the phase converter but could we use it to make 208 and my concern on that was whether the balancing capacitors, which now I know is actually a transformer in this case, would work. Well, with a transformer, it definitely wouldn't work, but with capacitors, it probably wouldn't either. But just to show that, I have a variac here. And so a variac can take 120 volt in, and you can dial that voltage back. So I could dial this to 50% and get 60 volt out. I could put that in here and I could get 120 volt out. But so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this up with this at 100%, and then I'm gonna dial it back until I have 208 on my main two legs and just see how balanced it is. So I'm just gonna plug this into the front of the Variac. And currently I have this set for 100%, so it should start exactly the same. And across my two main legs right now, I have right at about 237 volt. So I'm gonna dial this back until we get at 208. Okay, so that's roughly 208 right there. And now I'm gonna check it to our artificial lag. And, all right, I mean, we're at 201. I mean, I wouldn't knock that. But we can see that our phase imbalance is gonna be worse as we dial this back because it is designed to run on 240 volt. So I hope this video helps you understand a little about phase converters and about how you can backfeed transformers. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.